Hello everyone. This is Professor Sisibhushan Rao from Andhra University, India. Today we are going to talking about S parameters or S matrix of a directional coupler. Before we move on to the actual topic, let us recall the important properties of directional coupler which are useful in deriving the S matrix. This figure represents schematic diagram of a four port directional coupler. There are four ports. These four ports are denoted as port number one as input port, port number two as output port, and port number four as coupled port, and port number three as isolated port. Port number one and port number three are adjacent ports, which are isolated ports. Similarly, Port number 2 and port number 4 are known as adjacent ports. They are also isolated ports. And these properties can be better explained by using a two port network. The first property is power into any port is coupled into opposite two ports only, but is not coupled into adjacent port. So this can be explained in this way. When Input signal travels from port number 1 to port 2. A part of the signal is coupled to the port number 4. And the amount of coupled cup power depends on coupling factor. No power enters into the port number 3 because port number 1 and port number 3 are isolated ports. Similarly, port number 2 and port number 4 are isolated ports. And the second property is all ports are perfectly matched. So it means input impedance at each port is equal to characteristic impedance of the feeder line. As a result, the reflection coefficient of each port equals to zero. So that means at each port, if the particular port is perfectly matched, there will be no reflected power. So for example, if port number 2 is perfectly matched, B2 will be 0. Similarly, port number 1 is perfectly matched, B1 will be 0. Then the third property is reciprocal. It also means reversing the ports. For a network to be reciprocal, the input and output ports must be interchangeable. So other way of explaining this reciprocal property is transmission of a signal between any two ports does not depend on the direction of propagation of signal. It also exhibits symmetric property that means S equals to S transpose. And the fourth property is lossless. Lossless network means the sum of the powers that are entering into network is equals to sum of the powers that are leaving from the network. This can be explained in a mathematical form like this. Sum of the powers that are applied to this particular network is a1 and A2. So that is known as the sum of summation of k equals to 1 to 2 a square k where k equals to 1, 1 and 2 equals to the powers that are leaving from this port that is B1 and B2. That means no power is dissipated inside the network itself. Let us write the S matrix for a four port directional coupler. We use the properties of S matrix one by one. The first property of S matrix is S matrix is a square matrix. Therefore, for any device which has got n ports, its matrix will be n by n dimension. So in our case, our device is a four port device. So it will have a four by four matrix S matrix. 
I can write this as matrix as 4 by 4. And if you see the diagonal elements of this matrix, which are known as the S11, S22, S33, S44, there are the reflection coefficients observed at each port. Yes. And the second property of S matrix is, if all the ports are perfectly matched, reflection coefficients at each port is zero. That is known as the SII, which is nothing but the BI by AI. So I can replace the SIA equals to 0 in the diagonal elements and I can rewrite the matrix as like this. So that means initially we started with the matrix dimension as 4 by 4 that means 16 variables to be found. So now by using this property perfectly matched condition all the diagonal elements became 0. So it has been reduced to 12 parameters. So initially there were 16 variables. So after applying the perfectly matched condition, we got only 12 variables to be formed. You can see here. Let us apply the third property that is symmetric property. All reciprocal networks exhibits symmetric. It means S matrix is equal to its transpose which can be written as SIJ equals to SJA. It means all the diagonal elements are equal respectively. For example, S12 equals to S21, S13 equals to S31, similarly S43 equals to S34, S24 equals to S42, similarly S32 equals to S23. So, by applying this symmetric property, device properties into this matrix, we get into the, this, by applying these properties into this matrix, we get the resultant matrix like this. S12 and is, is equal to S21. So, I have replaced this S21 with S12 like this. So the number of variables have been reduced starting initially there were 16 but before applying the first property. After applying the second property that is perfectly matched condition, we got only 12 variables to be found. So after applying the symmetric property, the number of variables to be found have been reduced to 6. You can see here, there, there are only 6 properties here. S12, S13, S14, S24, S34 and S23. Let us use the device properties before applying the unitary condition. So the device properties are we have seen in the first slide. Port number 1 and port number 3 are known as adjacent ports and they are also isolated ports. That means power entering into port number 1 travels towards port number 2 only and a part of it will be coupled towards the port number 4 and no power will be entering from port number 1 to port number 3. Similarly, if I apply a power at port number 2, it travels towards port number 1 only and a part of it will be coupled towards the port number 3 and no power will be entering towards the port number 4. That means port number 2 and port number 4 are isolated ports. So, first case, 1 and 3 ports are isolated that means S13 equals to S31 equals to 0. Similarly, S24 equals to S42 that means if I apply power at port number 2, no power will be appearing at port number 4. Similarly, if I apply power at port number 4, no power will be appearing at port number 2. So, after the, after the application of these device properties, matrix will be reduced to this many variables. You can see because S13 equals to S31 equals to 0. Similarly, S24 and S42 equals to 0. So finally, initially the number of variables to be found are 16. It has been reduced to 12 variables after applying the perfectly matched condition and it has been reduced to 6 by applying the symmetric property. And now by after applying these device properties, the number of variables to be found have been reduced to 4 only. 
you can see here the same matrix is rewritten here. Now the four variables are S12, S12, S1, 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 and S23, S14, S34. There are only four variables to be found. Let us apply the final property that is unitary property. SC is unitary matrix for all reciprocal and lossless networks. Unitary condition has a notable property that is inverse of the square matrix equals to conjugate transpose. This can be written like this. It can be further simplified as S matrix multiplied with its conjugate equals to identity matrix. In matrix form, they can be written as like this. This is the S matrix and this matrix is representing the S conjugate and this matrix representing the identity matrix. So now the S matrix is a orthonormal matrix. It has got two properties. The first property is every vector in the S matrix has got length equals to 1. That means in mathematical form we can read the statement as sum of the product of a particular column with its conjugate equals to 1. For example, if I multiply the second column with its conjugate, that is this particular column with its conjugate, this one equals to 1. Similarly, the second property is orthogonal property. In any orthogonal matrix, two columns are orthogonal to each other. So this can be written as in mathematical form sum of the products of two dissimilar columns equals to 0. So now, now let us apply the first condition of the unitary property. Let us find out the product of a particular column 1 with its conjugate this one. I am finding the sum of the product of this particular column with its conjugate equals to 1. So this can be written as S12 times S12 conjugate S14 times S14 conjugate equals to 1. This can be further simplified as S12 mod square plus S14 mod square equals to 1 because product of a particular, co particular complex variable with its conjugate is equal to the mod square. Similarly, if I apply this first property to the second column, it becomes second equation. That means S12 square plus S23 square equals to 1. Similarly, third property, third this property I am applying to the third column. You can find a equation like this, third equation. So now I am applying the orthogonal property to this matrix for the columns column 1 and column 3 which is equal to 0. You can observe the first property in the right hand side is 1 and the second property says the right hand side is 0. The equation for the second property is yes, I am multiplying the first column with its conjugate column 3. So S12 times S23 conjugate that is similarly S14 times S34 conjugate equals to 0. Let us solve these equations. Let me carry forward this equation to the next slide and solve. These four equations have been brought from the previous slide. This is the S matrix to be found which has got four variables S12, S14, S23 and S34. First three equations are resulting from by applying the first condition of the orthonormal matrix that is magnitude of each vector in a orthonormal matrix is 1 that is in other words sum of the product of a particular column with its conjugate equals to 1 and the equation 4 is, res is resulting from by applying the orthogonal property to the orthonormal matrix that is S. 
that is sum of the product of two dissimilar columns equals to zero. So let us solve these four equations to find the these variables. By solving equation one and two, we can get s one four equals to s two three. Similarly, by solving equation number two and three, we can get s one two equals to s three four, and it can be written like this. Now let us assume. S12 and S34 as real and positive numbers. I can write like this. So by substituting this value p in place of S12 and S34, we get this matrix. So the number of variables have been reduced from four variables to only two, two variables. That is. S23 and S14. So here, when once a complex number is assigned a value real and positive, then its imaginary component will be zero. So that means a complex number will be equivalent to its complex conjugate. That means I can write S34 as S34 conjugate. So by substituting these values S12 and S34 conjugate equals to p in equation four, I can rewrite this equation as p times S23 conjugate plus S14 equals to zero because S34 is a complex number which is a real and positive. That means its imaginary part is zero. So that means a complex number will be equal to its conjugate. So the by substituting this value in this equation number four, we got this equation that is p times s two three conjugate plus s one four. Here p is not equal to zero because we have assumed p as real and positive. So s two three conjugate plus s one four must be zero. What is s s one four? S one four is nothing but the s two three. So let me substitute. S14 as S23, which is equal to zero. If you see this equation, a complex conjugate with its complex number equals to zero. So that means, if you see this proof, a complex number with its complex conjugate equals to zero means real part of this complex number is zero. That means this complex number is purely imaginary number. So that means S23 is Purely an imaginary number. It's not a real. So, real portion of the complex number S23 is zero. So that means S23 is JQ. Here JQ represents the complex number. So let me substitute this value S23, which is equal to S14. Here, in this matrix, then I get the final. Matrix as JQ, which is equal to S23, JQ, which is equal to S14. P is the real real value, which is equal to S12 and S34. So this is the final S matrix of a directional coupler. Thank you.